allow me just a few minutes to tell you why the ID50 is becoming my new favorite radio. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. For the last couple of years, I have been taking the VX6 with me on a very regular basis. And I really like this radio. It's built like a tank and it's got one of the best weather alert features I've ever seen on an HT. However, there was one thing that has just always annoyed me about this radio, and I knew it when I bought it, but it's a single VFO radio. And sometimes I need to be able to monitor multiple channels. Now, sure, we could do the dual watch on this, but that's just not what I was looking for. So I went out on a search and found the ID50. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit about why I chose the ID50 to take the place of the VX6. Now, right up front, let's start with what I lost by moving to the ID50. The VX6 gave me 220 right out of the box, and after I Mars modded it, I also got 6 meters. And I lost both of those when I moved to the ID50. However, that wasn't a real big concern to me because I don't use 220 or 6 meters that often on an HT. What I gained with the ID50 was D-Star and that unlocked a really, really cool feature. The nearby repeater feature on the ID50 and the 52 is one of the best features I have ever seen in an HT. Now I played with this a little bit on the uh, ICOM 705, but I just don't use my ICOM 705 that often on two meters uh, for repeater work. But it gives you the ability to download all of the FM and D-Star repeaters and then it uses the radio's GPS to look up and see which ones of those are closest to you, and it gives you a list. You can simply choose a repeater in that list, click OK, and it automatically reprograms your radio ready to go for that repeater. Now, much like 220 and 6 meters in the VX6, I don't really see myself using D-Star in this particular radio very often. Maybe when I'm traveling, I might use it occasionally, but we don't have but one D-Star repeater in my area, well, in Middle Tennessee at all, and I'm not able to hit it with the HT from the house. Now, maybe I could put up a better antenna and get into it with the HT, but that's just not one of the reasons I bought this radio. The primary reason I bought it is because it's a dual VFO radio, meaning I can monitor two repeaters or two simplex frequencies at the same time. Another huge benefit for moving to the ID50 was it is USB-C rechargeable. It also has a barrel port connection where you can charge with a barrel port if you see fit. Not only that, the battery off of this ID50 is compatible with the ICOM 705. So that means if I grab this and the 705, I can just exchange batteries between those two radios at any time I need to. Now, one thing that is just good enough when I move to the ID50 is the weather alert feature. Hands down, the VX6 is one of the best HTs you can use for weather alerts. When I move to the ID50, it's good. It's not great, but it's good and it's good enough. It is not as good as the VX6, but it is going to work perfectly fine for the situations where I use it. Now you might be thinking, well, Jason, why don't you just take and buy a weather alert radio and use it? Well, that's not always practical. For instance, if any of you are RVers, you'll know that anytime you can take one device and make it do multiple things, that's a weight savings and those weight savings add up when you put all of that together. So that's why I'm often out in the RV and I like to just keep a simple HT with me to give me that great weather alert. The other reason is, is uh, with my day job, I work in the field quite a bit and I'm outside. We do a lot of our work in the spring and sometimes there is severe weather in the area but not directly impacting the area I'm in at that particular moment. However, having one of these radios just scanning lets me know when severe weather may move a little bit too close to us. 
This radio also offers something that's kind of unique. I don't really see a way that I'm going to use this very often, but it is kind of cool when I did some testing of it. You can take your cell phone, download an app. Now it's Android only, so if you're on an iPhone, I can't help you with that, but Android only. You can download an app, take a photo with your phone, transfer it to the radio using the USB cable. Then you can use DV mode on this HT to send that picture over RF. I've tried this by sending it from this radio to the 705, and that is a pretty neat little parlor trick. When you send it uh, from another radio like the 705 to this radio, well, you can't get a real good clear image of that, but you can use that app again to download the image from the radio and view it on your phone. And it gives you up to a 640 by 480 image when you're doing that transfer over RF. Now, like I said, I don't really see me using that feature that much, but it is kind of a cool little trick to have in your bag. The main reason I moved to this was that dual v VFO. It's also submersible, just like the VX6, so I don't have to worry about being caught out in the elements with this radio. One other thing that I've been able to do with the ID50 is I've been able to get the GPS data off of this radio and pipe that into a laptop running Linux Mint. That lets me leave behind a, a traditional GPS dongle and just use this radio to pull the data and get it into the computer when I want to do something like APRS or I want to file a WinLink position report. Now, if you're already subscribed to my newsletter, you'll know that I do a lot of follow-ups after videos in the newsletter. If you're not subscribed, there's a link down in the description below. They come out once a week, and I promise not to spam you. Now, let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. You're going to pay twice for the ID50, which you'll pay for the VX6. Me, I don't have an issue with that. I like good quality tools. If that's not you, I completely get it. When I first started in this hobby, I had two Baofeng UVRs, and those were my first two radios, and I carried those for multiple years before I upgraded to a radio similar to the ID50. It's all in where you place your value and what your needs are. If your needs are met by the VX6, well, good. If they're not, maybe the ID50 is something you should take a look at as well. I think this is going to be a fantastic radio to have when I'm supporting things like public service events where I need a dual band radio, uh, dual VFO radio, and I don't want to worry about being caught out in the rain. If you're carrying something like a basic UV5R and you get that thing drenching wet or you drop it in the creek, well, you're going to be out a radio. Now, doesn't cost a whole lot to replace it, but you're still going to be out a radio. If you take this ID50 out, drop it in the creek, well, you don't have to worry about it. Pick it up, shake the water off of it, and keep on trucking. So anyway, there's a few reasons that I chose the ID50 to be my new HT. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.